The chance we have every evening before the meditation are meant to put you in the right frame of mind. We start with respect for the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And it's good to stop and think about why we respect them. What it comes down to is that they teach us to respect something worthy of respect in ourselves. Our desire for happiness that doesn't change into something else, or just the desire for happiness that doesn't harm anyone. That's the desire that should be respected. And here we are, we have a chance to work on that desire. It's very rare in the world that we have the time and the opportunity. So here's our chance. The chance on goodwill. Those are meant to put us in the right mood, too, for the very same reason we're looking for a true happiness. And if you want to have goodwill for everyone, it has to be happiness that doesn't harm anybody. As for the reflections on the body, in case thoughts of lust come up in the course of the meditation, you're going to ask yourself, which part of the body are you lusting for? And you take all the parts out and put them in your imagination on the floor in front of you. And there's really nothing that calls for lust. You realize that the issue is not the body out there, it's just the mind's desire to have something to entertain itself. So the issue is here inside, so you've got to turn your attention back here inside to look at the, for the problem. And then the reflections on aging, illness, death, and separation, those are meant to give rise to a sense of heedfulness and also sangwega. Sangwega is a sense of looking at life as, as a whole and seeing this pretty futile. All the things we work for, we're going to have to leave at some point. You know, there's, there's something noble in leaving something good behind. Still, that too will eventually have to go. The reflection on action, that's meant to give rise to a sense of confidence that there is, there is a way out of this endless futility. And that's through our own actions. Where do the actions come from? They come from the mind. They come from our intentions. So the reflections keep taking our thoughts that may be wandering away and circling them back here at the present moment, right at the breath. Now, even so, some of, the, some of the reflections are kind of grim. Try to develop a sense of confidence and a sense of well-being as you're sitting here. The Buddha taught about stress and suffering not to get us depressed, but because he knows the way out. And he wants us to find the way out, so we should have some confidence we're on the right path here. A path where the duties have to do with our finding true happiness inside. So take some refreshment just from those thoughts. And then try to embody it, <clears throat> embody it in your breath. Take some long, good, long, deep in and out breaths. And if long breathing feels good, keep it up. At the point where it doesn't feel good anymore, you can let the breath gradually go softer, shorter, or change in whatever way feels right for the body. And then when the breath feels good, think of that good breath's energy flowing through different parts of the body. We do this for two reasons. One is that it's just a good place to, for the mind to stay. It makes it easier to stay in the present moment. And two, you've got to be prepared. Because as you sit here, pains will come up in the body. And if the breath is not in good shape, they're more likely to come and to take hold. But if you've already cleared out the breath energy in the body, it's less likely that they'll come in. So we work with the breath both for the fact that it feels good in the present moment and because it has good long-term effects. 
you want to sit here for the hour, you've got to be prepared. Prepare your mind, prepare your body. Those chants are preparing your mind, now you've got to prepare the body. So it's in good shape to sit here. So the nerves aren't pinched, the blood vessels aren't pinched. There's a sense of easy flow, especially down through the hips, down through the legs. Flow in the shoulders, down the arms to the, to the fingers. Think of all the tired parts of the body getting refreshed. If there are particular parts of the body where there's, you have a chronic pain, think of the breath energy going right through there. And do your best to open up the tension that may have developed around that. And again, we're working with the pain so that it makes it pleasant to sit here for the hour. But then you start thinking about, why are we sitting here for a whole hour? Actually, an hour is a pretty short time for training the mind. If we sat as a group for longer than that, people would start zoning out. But it's important you realize we've got to be here for a long period of time, so we want to make it pleasant now and also have good results on into the future. We're trying to understand how the mind relates to having a body, how it relates to its thoughts. And to see that requires patience, because not everything shows itself right away. So you get the mind in the right spot, and you watch. And learn, how, learn how to keep your mind active and alert while you're watching. Because as you think down the line, the pains of meditation are nothing compared to pains that will come up at later points in, in your life. You want to be prepared for that. If you understand how the mind relates to pain and can train it to relate in a way that doesn't add more unnecessary suffering, that's going to be a really useful skill. The Buddha compares it to being shot by an arrow. And then instead of taking the arrow out, you just shoot yourself with more arrows. That's the way most of us relate to pain. In other words, our craving to get rid of it and our efforts to get rid of it or to run away from it actually make it worse. Make huge inroads on the mind. So what you want to have is just the one arrow, not the most. Learn how to keep the mind from getting worked up about the arrow. That's the problem right there. Again, that's with so many other problems in life. It's the way you approach things that creates trouble. So as you're meditating here, you want to see, one, how you habitually approach things already, and then two, see how you can change things. We're not sitting here just watching whatever comes up and accepting whatever comes up. We accept that it's there, but then we don't stop there. We move on to see what can be changed here, and particularly what can be changed in the direction of allowing the mind to not have to make itself suffer, teaching it new skills, teaching it new approaches, so that it can have a sense of refreshment, well-being now in the present moment. And it can also use that sense of refreshment for more long-term purposes. Because when the mind is refreshed, it doesn't feel quite so threatened by pain. And it can start looking into it with curiosity instead of fear. Try to figure out what is it? What is the sensation of pain anyhow? When you feel pain in the body, is it really there in the body? Is it the same thing as the body, or are they two separate things that simply intersect? And can you see them as separate things? Can you see the pain as separate from, from your awareness? It's really something very different, because pain doesn't know anything. Your awareness knows, but pain doesn't know. So obviously it's something different, and yet we glom all these things together. So probe around. 
once you've got a sense of well-being that comes from the breath, your mind is a lot more confident, so they can begin to make some forays into the pain. If it finds that it's making things worse, well, back off for a bit. You've got a place to back off to. And you're simply knowing that you've got a place to go where you don't have to be in the line of fire with the pain it makes you more confident in looking into it, probing into it, trying to figure it out. It's in this way that the concentration is one of those activities that is good in the short term and good in the long term. In other words, it's good in the present moment and it puts the mind in a place where it can start gaining some understanding in itself, into itself, that we'll be able to take with it and use for a long time to come. So we're being prepared. We're preparing ourselves. We prepare ourselves to meditate with our, the chants, and then we prepare ourselves with meditation for the events in life that the chants are talking about. Aging, illness, and death will come. There's suffering out there, and there can be suffering in here, but there doesn't have to be suffering in here. That's the good news. So what we do as we meditate is we make that good news our news. now and on to the future.